Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the start of a brand new series that we're doing here for Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3. This new series is going to be called Reviewed and Ranked. And the basic gist of how this is going to work is I am going to take each and every character within the Ultimate Alliance roster, break them down at their very best in terms of their basic attacks, heavy attacks, aerial attacks, ground movement, synergies, abilities, extreme attacks, everything that you need to know when considering whether or not you want to place one of these heroes on your team. And at the end of breaking down their abilities and such, we will be placing them in a tier list where we will go adding to that ranking at the end of each individual character's analysis. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. So let's go ahead and jump into the very first character we'll be having a look at in this series, that being Black Panther. Now, Black Panther is a very interesting character and... I glossed over him for quite a long time, and I'm kind of upset that I did because he is immensely powerful. And before we jump into anything, we want to make sure that we look at the synergies from team building that you can incorporate onto your team if you plan your roster correctly. Now, we have a couple of synergies that you'll see listed over on the left side of the screen in one of four different categories. And do keep in mind that there are six different synergy types which you can build out through your team. The ones that we're going to talk on first are the ones with those yellow icons, and that is the resilience synergy. And this has more to do with how well you can tank certain hits within a fight, uh, specifically some more of the energy-based attacks rather than the brute force landed blows. Those are synergies labeled as being the crew back in black, and big brains. And we will eventually see the entire roster and who falls into these trees. I may even make a video where we break down who fits into each category. But for this series, we are going to be focusing on what synergies each character has available to them, not the comprehensive list that you can build out to gain access to them. The second set of synergies that you'll notice here fall into the energy area and those can be found by pairing Black Panther with Marvel royalty or Avengers characters. And energy plays into how well you can cycle through and use your ability and synergy attacks within the combat system. So it's kind of nice to have those along for the ride when and wherever possible. The third criteria is actually the lone criteria in its class, that being the mastery increase in the agile fighters series and you can probably guess who falls into that type of category but again we'll touch on them uh, individually as we come around the mastery will allow you to deal additional damage from your abilities and synergies as you go about attack attacking so those can be quite handy to have on hand whenever you're going into a round of combat and last but not least we have the strength mastery increases found with the cutting edge synergy and the fantastic four reserve member synergy and of course as you may expect the strength attributes will benefit any brute force attack that you are sending out as a member of your team so those are all quite nice synergies to have on hand now, Black Panther is very well known for being able to tank a lot of heavy hits, dish a lot of heavy hits back out, and that's kind of what we're looking for in this series. So let's go ahead and have a look at his main series of attacks here. And something that you are going to notice is that he has... A basic attack flurry of seven different hits that will chain together in a very linear style. You can kind of manipulate the area or the path. The footage that I have playing over here is purely demonstrative at this stage, just so you can kind of get a feel 
of what those attacks look like. And the positive thing to note about Black Panther's standard attacks is as he layers them into his opponents, they will be staggered a little bit and not be able to retaliate immediately upon hit unless they are one of the opponents that does have the capacity of blocking the oncoming blows. Now, we do also see that Black Panther has a very strong heavy attack that involves an upwards sweeping kick, and it comes out pretty quickly. It's a very short duration. It's a relatively safe move to throw out and highly effective. And as a matter of fact, you can actually chain your attacks from your basic combo into a heavy attack either by substituting the last hit or if you have the time to execute it properly, you can even chain that heavy attack onto the end of the full basic attack combo, which works very, very well in certain circumstances and further increases your damage output. Do keep in mind that using your heavy attack will send the opponents flying backwards, so it may not be ideal to use in every circumstance, but can certainly be implemented in terms of delivering a finishing blow. The next thing that we need to note about Black Panther is he does have access to a double jump or a mid-air somersault double jump and that is quite nice for mobility sake in getting around some of the more tricky to navigate areas. I find characters that have the double jump to be particularly useful when it comes to navigating the different laser grids such as the ones that are found on the raft and in the uh, Asgard uh, sections of the main story quest. So do keep that in mind as well. And something else important to note is that Black Panther does have a very reliable aerial attack that he can unleash as he comes down out of a jump or falls off of a ledge or even following up some of his abilities, which we will talk about a little bit later. You do need to be cautious about this though, because if you do not hold that button, for a long enough period of time when initiating that falling aerial attack, you will not complete it. And you can kind of see that with the footage that's playing out currently. So just be aware that you do fully press down that button in order to completely engage that attack. Now, the last thing that we need to touch on, this doesn't really play in a whole lot to the power ranking of the character, uh, but it's always important to know what the dash and block animations look like for your characters you're working with. So Black Panther, he just engages in a simple arm blocking cross stance, and as he rolls around, he will dash forward or to the side, depending on which area you have the input in for that maneuver. So... All things considered, as long as you're able to control him and dash around at your own pace, you're going to be able to do so uh, fairly well and get a pretty good feel for what that entails. Now, we're finally ready to move on and talk about Black Panther's abilities and the attacks, whether or not they can synergize with other teammates. So the first ability that he gains access to or has in his available kit is the Panther Claw ability. This sends Black Panther spiraling forward in a ferocious slash and hits in a very linear area or a very linear form of attack. It has the piercing attack attribute to it, which is consistent with all except one of Black Panther's abilities. And it also has the barrage synergy trait. So the synergy trait is very important to remember because if you do not have a synergy trait with your attack, you will not be able to employ it as a synergy attack with other members of your team. And that does come into play with one of his other abilities, which again, we'll talk about here in just a moment. But the Panther Claw, it has a couple of benefits as you rank it up and get it to its max efficiency. The first tier increase will reduce the EP cost or the energy points consumed in order to use the move. The second rank up will increase the attack damage. The third rank up will increase the damage to the opponent's stagger gauge, and the fourth increase and final increase will reduce the chance of the attack being interrupted when you are starting up or using the attack, which is always very nice, uh, or a very nice addition to have and to use there. The damage is very high on this move, so it's very nice to use even in a standalone on its own, though you do want to prioritize using it in a synergy format whenever you can, as it is something that he, is access, that he has access to using 
with other members of his team. The EP use is a little bit high, but it does more than make up for it with the damage that it can send out. And it does play a very nice role into staggering out the opponents as you layer into them. Now, the second ability that we need to talk about is Bost's Fury. And this is a interesting move in his kit as it puts Black Panther in a defensive state, allowing him to absorb incoming attacks and then release a concussive energy blast back at his enemies. You can hold this attack to charge it and you can hold it indefinitely as long as you have the energy points to spend on it. And that is reflected by the advancements that are made by ranking up this attack. You can see that initially it reduces the energy point cost for the move. It then increases, increases the attack damage before moving on and further reducing the energy point cost in order to use this move. As we already mentioned, it has the energy attribute to the attack and is the synergy trait safeguard as initially or for the majority of this move it does not have a damage output capacity but when synergized does allow you to unleash a couple of additional benefits from either incoming attacks from your opponents or even your allies as they use their abilities on you while you are in this safeguard mode. Now something that is very handy about Bost's Fury is you can tank some pretty heavy hitting and nasty looking hits. And I've got a couple of examples here from sections within the main story quest. And you will notice that the first little clip that we're looking at involves running up a section and interacting with one of those aim turrets. And all of those attacks are reflected right back onto that cannon and absolutely demolish or tank it. The other item that is very, very overpowered of this ability is Black Panther's option to use it to tank natural hazards within the quest itself. And you're seeing that right now with this large, devastating laser cannon from the Black Panther statue as it rifles down this main walkway. Uh, Black Panther completely tanks those hits and walks away with little to no repercussions, which is a very important thing for you to know that you have available to your disposal should you need to use it. The third ability that Black Panther has access to is the Aerial Assault. And this sends Black Panther into a spinning, shredding leap in an upwards direction, kind of a cyclone or a blade uh, type action as he rises up from the ground. Now this is an, a, another one of those piercing type attacks and it does not have a synergy trait. You cannot synergize this attack with any other teammate which is a little bit of a bummer because this is a very high damage output move especially because you can actually chain a falling aerial attack onto it similar with some other members of the cast in order to regain some additional energy points back to your usable gauge as well as increase your overall damage output of using this move. As you advance it, it does reduce the energy point cost as well as increasing the attack damage and the damage to, done to the stagger gauge and the final rank up for this ability will reduce the chance of the attack being interrupted, which you don't really need to worry about a whole lot because it does have a very quick startup to this move. Again, this looks very similar to the Panther Claw where it has a very high damage output potential and that does not include your ability to stack on the falling aerial attack to it, as well as being decently nice on your EP usage or your energy point consumption and doing nice damage to the stagger gauge. And the fourth and final attack that we need to talk about in his abilities and synergies is the Vibranium Slash. This will spur Black Panther forward in a dash, followed by a powerful clawed right hand swipe. And you do need to be a little bit cautious with this and make sure that you have your spacing down, as in order to get the most benefit of this attack, you need to make sure that that final swipe is taking place right on the opponent that you're aiming for. So if you initiate this attack when you're right on top of one of your opponents, you're going to miss out on a lot of the damage output available to you through this attack. And this is one that you can synergize. It does have the bash synergy trait attributed to it. It follows a similar pattern to the Aerial Assault and the Panther Claw, where it initially has a reduced EP cost or consumption, then increases the attack damage, the 
damage to the stagger gauge and then reduces the chance of the attack being interrupted once you get it to its maximum potential. Now, in contrast to the overall usage for this move in comparison with the Panther Claw and the Aerial Assault, the damage is a little bit lower in being in that B tier, though I've noticed that it doesn't really matter a whole lot as long as you're able to space it relatively nice with where you're lining those attacks up. The EP usage is pretty consistent with what we've seen throughout the remainder of his kit, but the stagger gauge damage that this does is one of the best options that you can have with this character, let alone in the game itself. It's a very, very nice ability to be able to use. The only other item that we need to talk about is Black Panther's Extreme Attack. And the Extreme Attack, it has a relatively quick startup and goes through its cycle very fast. The entire animation is done within a five second span. And you will actually notice that this is one of those attacks where it will be initiated pretty much immediately in the area of where the opponent, where your character is. So make sure that you are near or right on top of the opponent that you're wanting to use this on, especially if you're trying to use this to take down a boss type character, as it's going to be a very useful item in your arsenal in order to take him down. But where does this all of this actually put Black Panther in the terms of the rankings? Well, he has a decent amount of hits on his basic attacks, a very quick and heavy hitting heavy attack, a lot of very useful synergies that he has available to him. He's not the quickest character in the roster, but he still is very quick, will remain at the front part of your party, providing that he doesn't have to compete with team members that have to teleport or fly to get around certain objects. Uh, he's very versatile, very heavy hitting, and for this reason, with everything that we've looked at today, I feel very comfortable placing Black Panther in the S tier of the heroes within this game. But what do you think? Do you agree with my ranking? Do you agree with my breakdown? Do you have any other thoughts with things I may have overlooked or not utilized with Black Panther? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, please leave a like on the video if you found it enjoyable or helpful to any degree. And be sure to subscribe for more daily content as you won't want to miss the next installments in this series as they will be coming out on a once a week basis, but with many other videos from other games to tie you over until that next video drops. But thanks again for watching. I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and take care.